Good heavens, this statuette represents the king. Oh, what a terrible way to end up. Oh, the evil wizard has cast a spell on him. Hmm. According to the prisoner we released, only Shadwin the Wise can help us now. Welcome back to Goblins, everyone. As we established last time, we need to find Shadwin the Wise, and that wizard is blocking our path. We're gonna need to sneak past him somehow without being seen, which is why we have an elixir of invisibility. Well, that was an easy puzzle. Yeah, of course, it's not going to be quite that simple. Instead, there's something rather well hidden here. If we move Hooter to the side a little bit, we can sort of see something poking up behind that tree root. And this begins what I think is a relatively easy puzzle to figure out. We've got a bird call. There's a nest with eggs up there. So we want to call the bird. And we have to be standing next to the nest when we do it, because otherwise the bird's just going to lay an egg on our heads. And at this point, you're probably wondering what we need to do with this bird. Well, think about what birds do in nature when they're sitting on eggs. It just sort of takes a while. If you do anything to the bird, it'll get pissed off and fly away. But if you wait long enough, then one of the eggs will grow legs. For some reason. And to put it in the words of Leave My Wife, an egg with legs is an abomination. Punch it which cracks the shell just enough so that it can grow wings as well as legs. And somehow, without any sort of flying lessons, a little dose of magic, this egg will carry Hooter over to the far side. So that's one third of our goal accomplished. But this little mole here is gonna hide in his hole as long as Hooter is standing nearby. The only thing we can really manipulate over here is the horn. Hooter casts his magic on the Hooter, as it were. And that will provide Dwayne a way to sneak by. So we just need to grab the elixir that we left over here. And make our way once again to the far side of the room. Now this is kind of tricky, because for some reason he'll only take one step every time you click. So you gotta keep clicking over and over again to make him actually get past the wizard. But you have plenty of time to do it. And now we simply pick up the carrot and apply it to the only thing over here that makes any sense. Now the mole is attracted to the carrot and will stay within range of our magic. No particular comment, although you'll probably notice that the wizard was fairly distracted by that, which will give us the opportunity to sneak our last character over to the far side of the screen. Every step is pretty logical once you find the bird call, I think. Not so much some of the later parts of this video but we'll get to those. We reach a garden where the first thing you've got to do is not immediately obvious. Yeah, there's a stick down here we can pick up. It's the only object in the room that we can pick up at the moment. And it doesn't do anything for us. 
What we actually need to do is cast magic on this little flat stone here. Looks like background. But it's actually our ticket to get up onto the top of this dolmen. And there's a tiny hole on the right side. Almost obscured. Looks sort of like an artifacting error. If you missed out with a stick, he'll just beat himself over the head with it. I've done that many, many times. The watering can is obviously used to water these little plants here. And now the level can truly begin. Although, in a sense, it's pretty much over. We've done the complicated part of things. At this point, the rest is just figuring out which of these many carrots we need to interact with. So we'll get Dwayne out of the way, and punching is clearly not the solution here. We need to cast magic on these carrots to find out what's beneath them. Because it ain't carrot. Or at least it's a carrot with attitude. This one's a little friendlier. It's just got a keyhole on it. But the key is hidden under another carrot. Well, that one at least is benign. And, of course, the final carrot hides our key. On the nose ring of a rebellious teenage carrot, but we can't get to it. You might have also noticed that I skipped one carrot, and there's a reason for that. This is a good carrot to hit last. Hooter loves making ladies in white appear, and this one actually heals us. But only once. Then it hurts us. I don't know why that is. Anyway, having found the one way that I know of in the game to recover our health, this far in, it's a simple matter to punch the key out of the nose of the carrot, pick up the key, If we can target the key rather than the carrot. And open the door in the other carrot. And may we never see another carrot again. Now, for some reason, it takes forever for the go marker to appear, but opening the carrot is all we need to do. And finally, hidden under the carrot patch, we find the home of Shadwin the Wise, who's so wise, he's sleeping through this game. This is the most annoying room in the entire game. Because we obviously need to wake Shadwin the Wise in order to get his advice. But this dude will sleep through just about anything. And you know what they say, if you can't wake him with a stick, you gotta do it with a cat. Keep that in mind as I proceed here. So let's make some noise, see if we can wake him up. Now, the gong is loud enough to hurt us, but it doesn't wake him. So, if I can convince Dwayne to go up to the top of the screen... There's a little matchbox up in the corner. And that, obviously, is going to be very important for dealing with that cannon in the center of the room. At least in this game, we don't need to supply our own fuses. But not even the sound of a cannon is enough to wake Shadwin. 
we're going to need to load that cannon. And there's a supply of cannonballs over here, but we need to punch one of them off the stack in order to pick it up. This is precisely the opposite of handy with our one item inventory. And Dwayne petulantly refuses to put the cannonball into the cannon because it's facing the wrong direction. As we all know, you have to point a cannon upwards before you can load it, so we need to punch it again. And now we can light the cannon. It's like they were really looking to have Bobo be useful in a level instead of just doing one random thing. And with that, we have killed Shadwin the Wise. Because it's not enough to punch the cannon, load the cannon, and fire the cannon. You have to punch the cannon, load the cannon, and punch the cannon again. Bobo gets a real workout in this level. And this is, of course, the shortest path to get through. Usually the challenge is figuring out what it is you have to do and then doing it is just a minor portion of it. You can play through most of the game in almost no time, but here you're going to be spending a lot of time having Bobo run back and forth between the cannonballs and the cannon. And of course, Dwayne picking up one thing, going back and picking up the other thing. There's a whole lot to do. But, once we make sure that the cannon is pointing toward the ceiling with the cannonball in it, we can finally pick up the matches, light the cannon, and accomplish something. We knock a carrot down from the ceiling. At least it's not a rebellious teenage carrot. But the carrot is also not going to help us wake Shadwin. Maybe if we put it in the cook pot and boiled it, but Dwayne won't put the carrot into the cook pot either. And there's really only one other place in the room where we could conceivably put a carrot. Yeah, we gotta fire it into the cook pot using the cannon. This is mainly annoying for reasons that will become clear very shortly. Because when we put a cannonball into the cannon, it points downwards again, so we need to punch it to make it point upwards. With the carrot, it's not heavy enough, so the cannon still points upwards, and the carrot just fires straight into the torch. So, of course, we need to go get another one. Punch the cannonballs, pick up a cannonball, put the cannonball in, punch the cannon, pick up the matches, light the cannon. Carrot falls from the ceiling, pick up the carrot, put the carrot in the cannon, punch the cannon, pick up the matches, light the cannon again. Carrot goes into the cook pot. We light the fire under the cook pot. And he finally wakes up, but he's hard of hearing, and we need to fix that. Uh...
Punch the cannonball. Pick up the cannonball. Punch the cannon. Put the cannon. Punch the cannon. Pick up the man. Light the cannon. Carrot falls from the ceiling. Turn the carrot into an ear. Pick up the ear trumpet. And we can finally talk to Shadwin the Wise. So, as usual, we're not going to find out what he told us until we actually finish the level. But he did conspicuously make this little mallet appear here. And the mallet can obviously be applied to the gong. And from here, everything is confusing, but fairly straightforward. I don't know exactly what that did, but another new thing has appeared. And this is the point at which they kind of said, well, I don't know how to make these objects get into our inventory, so let's just sort of throw them at the player. Only the Statue of Serenity, transcended by Gemelor, the Dragon's Fire, has the power to break the spell holding the king in its thrall. Yeah, the first time I played, I didn't really make a whole lot of sense out of that, but of course, I was using the hint book at the time. So here we have the Statue of Serenity, but we need to transcend it with Gemelor the Dragon's Fire. Whatever the heck that means. First thing we need to do is figure out what this pendulum is for. We can use it in various places, but it only does something right in the center of the screen. And that's the purpose of the pendulum, to mark this spot. And we can't even put the pendulum down to mark that spot. But it's pointing to whatever we need. Now we pick up this little rock and put it on top of the obvious X over there. Because there's literally nothing else to do in this screen but work with that rock. So the rock turns into a step, and only on top of the X, the step will turn into a ladder and become part of the background. Of course, at this point, now that we can get up to the statue, it's not immediately apparent what we need to do with it. Well, we don't do anything with the statue at all, because like I said, we don't have the dragon's fire. We need to cast magic on this little palm tree over here to turn it into a pickaxe and then punch the pickaxe because Bobo doesn't have anything to do again. And the pickaxe is, of course, the correct tool for digging a big hole in the ground. And we know where to dig because either we use the pendulum or we just sort of click the pickaxe in random places until this happened. And yes, you've got to click it over and over again until the hole is big enough. You know, that pickaxe would have been useful in the next screen, but we're not taking it with us. Instead, Gimelor the Dragon's Lair appears to be right under the Statue of Serenity. And we need to get the dragon's fire somehow. So there's a big pile of wood over here. And doesn't it seem quite natural that the wood could be used as a torch? I mean, granted, normally you have to wrap it in something, but hey, it's Goblin's logic. Yeah, we can't get to the dragon. We can only stand on this little step and put things in front of it as an offering. Unfortunately, the wood burns too easily. We're going to need something that's flammable, but not destructible. And alas, a bear trap stands in our way. So, the wood is useful for triggering the bear trap. 
Want to see whether magic does anything to it, though. Yep, it just kind of comes to life and scares us. So let's trigger it. And now we can go get the sword. The bridge is another trap. And I have to assume that the bridge put the bear trap there to make us think it was the only trap in the area. So we, what we need here is that little bag in front of the dragon, but we can't get to it, so we're familiar with this puzzle at least. We'll use our magic to bring the bag within range of where we can pick it up. Oh, and by the way, if a character stands in front of the dragon for too long, he becomes the offering. But fortunately, it's not instant death. So we'll go pick up the bag. And then quickly get out of the way. It's a bag of seeds. And what this does isn't immediately apparent. But the thing that matters is where you're standing when you use it. Using it on the bridge does nothing, but if we use it near the bridge... Then... a dismembered foot hops across the screen. This obviously doesn't do anything for us. What you need to do is use the seeds on the top level of the screen, where there's no killer bridge in the way. And the foot will hop all the way across, pause at the left side, and then hop back. We can't pick up the foot while it's still hopping, though. To stop a foot, this is completely ridiculous. Bring Hooter up here. Get the foot to come out. And get ready with our magic. You can't target the foot. So what we need to do is use our magic on the log that we've already used to disable the bear trap. And it turns into a can of deodorant. I'm gonna have to get Hooter out of the way so I can actually pick it up. But this shows the problem with inventory item based puzzles in this game. We're going to need to very quickly swap between the seeds and the deodorant. And it's one of those timing things that if you're not coordinated enough, you may never be able to pull off. But we've now deodorized the foot. It's incapacitated. And the foot is obviously made of meat, which we can feed to the meat-eating bridge. Only the bridge doesn't seem to be interested in it for some reason. I'm going to leave it as an exercise to the reader to figure out why, because this is the point at which Leave My Wife ironically had to leave me to go spend time with his wife, and we came back after a short break. So see if you can figure out what to do with the foot, and I'll catch you guys for the finale in the next video.